We are accustomed to seeing Japanese women with a shy gait, a quiet gaze, and a face hidden by whitewash when in the presence of strangers. However, there existed among them ninja women who were skilled seductresses, capable of charming even the most resistant men. These women were cunning spies and professional assassins who boasted of sophistication, beauty, and extensive knowledge. Even the most skilled of warriors stood no chance against these deadly kunoichi. While the image of a girl ninja or kanoichi is frequently replicated in movies, the reality of these women was vastly different. Therefore, let's explore who the kunoichi were and their incredible power. To begin, it is essential to clarify who the real ninjas were, or, as they are correctly known, shinobi. In movies we typically witness individuals clad in black suits and masks adeptly fighting off enemies with karate. However, in reality, shinobi primarily functioned as spies and saboteurs, rather than a combat force. While they were indeed skilled in martial arts for shinobi, it was far more crucial to avoid detection and escape without conflict. Their primary job was to purloin classified documents, contaminate wells, spread appropriate rumors, and vanish without a trace. According to historians, Mochizuki Chiyom was the first recorded kunoichi in the 16th century. She was the wife of the renowned samurai Mokizuki Moritoki, who purportedly passed down his knowledge to her. Following the death of her husband, Shion was placed in the care of Takeda Shinjin, the head of the Takeda clan and her late husband's uncle. It was at this point that Takeda enlisted her to establish a covert network of kunoichi to deploy against warring warlords. Shion selected young women who were orphans, in need of a livelihood, or seeking to escape difficult circumstances as her apprentices. The concept of a women-led clan of warriors was extremely unconventional in medieval Japan, where women were often relegated to domestic roles and expected to be subservient to their husbands. However, Takeda recognized the potential of such an unconventional approach, since a woman's involvement would be considered unlikely, they would not be suspected or detected by authorities. Shion cleverly utilized her husband's family's long-standing support of the Mako, or shaman nuns, to create a perfect cover for her school. The Manko held significant social and spiritual standing in Japan and were exclusively female, making them ideal for Chiyom's plan to train Kunoichi under the guise of nuns. To bolster the illusion, Chiyom recruited students from disadvantaged backgrounds, such as orphans or families, unable to provide for their daughters, whom they entrusted to the nuns for a better future. This narrative allowed Chiyom to cultivate an image as a charitable benefactor who cared for those in need while in reality training the most formidable women in history. While the girls in the temple performed traditional duties such as serving, learning medicine, and mastering ritual dances, they also received secret training in martial arts, poisons, and self-improvement techniques behind closed doors. These techniques included a unique form of movement that allowed the kanoichi to take quick and silent steps. They were also credited with the ability to become so weightless that they could walk on water. In fact, Shinobi and Kunoichi used special bamboo paddles that were attached to their feet and allowed them to glide on water. The Kunoichi also received training in ninjutsu, the art of stealth, which extended beyond mere smoke bombs and vanishing tricks. It encompassed the ability to blend in with the common people by perfecting the art of disguise. Shinobi often posed as unassuming peasants growing rice, acted in kabuki theaters, or posed as merchants while Kunoichi assumed the guises of nuns, geishas, and prostitutes. The greatest skill of a ninja lay not in the ability to wield a katana, but in the art of transformation and deception. With expert training and experience, Shinobi could transition from appearing as a lowly commoner to commanding the authority of a powerful shogun in mere seconds. Unlike their male counterparts, the Kunoichi honed their craft using their intelligence, feminine wiles, and mastery of the art of manipulation. As well as studying martial arts and wielding edged weapons, they were adept at charming, adapting, and intuitively understanding male psychology. While legends credit them with being so formidable that even seasoned warriors feared them, such stories were likely the product of clever propagandizing by the kunoichi themselves. Disguise was the primary weapon of the ninja. By posing as maids or daishas, they could infiltrate where an army of samurai would not. Meanwhile, the kunoichi carved paths into the enemy's most vulnerable areas. Spying, collecting, and disseminating information was their main objective, rather than assassination. The kunoichi acquired expertise in the art of charm and seduction. Often educated, they could converse fluently on a wide range of topics. 
They are renowned for appearing as the most desirable and engaging geisha of their time. Konoichi didn't just rely on typical female traits such as fragility, compliance, and humility to seduce their targets. They possessed a unique technique of seduction that no man could resist. The secrets of these techniques are recounted by the legendary ninja Masaki Hatsumi. According to him, when men were targeted by Kunoichi, they often lost their senses. This was one of the primary tools of the Kunoichi. They could leverage their femininity as a secret weapon, cunningly exploiting their sexual appeal to blindsight their foes. These skilled women used their unique abilities to blur the distinction between illusion and reality, leaving their enemies disoriented and befuddled. The Kunoichi were not only trained in practical skills like martial arts, but also in the art of presentation. According to Masaki Hatsumi, their studies included learning how to dress elegantly, apply makeup, and converse gracefully. However, as Hatsumi notes, clothing, cosmetics, beauty, or figure alone are not sufficient to charm a target. True seductiveness is based on a combination of femininity, playfulness, frivolity, and effortless behavior. The key, then, is for Kunoichi to master the art of behaving appropriately in a given setting. When a Kunoichi approached a group of men, and her behavior seemed relaxed and effortless, Hatsumi claims that they would all be smitten. They could make their victims believe that only they could offer what no other woman could. Once the man was under their spell, the Kunoichi could control him completely, even using special perfumes with pheromones to help subdue his will. They then went about their business, which could involve anything from extracting secrets to inciting betrayal. According to legend, during the siege of a city, a Kunoichi seduced a warlord and convinced him to open the city gates at night. The samurai were then able to infiltrate the city and conquer it. Ninja, both shinobi and Kunoichi, were masters of espionage in feudal Japan, akin to 007 agents in modern times. However, even the most skilled ninja could face exposure during their missions. This is where secret gadgets came in, much like those used by Hollywood's super spies. Contrary to popular belief, ninjas did not openly carry weapons, if at all. Instead, the favored weapon of the shinobi was the kusaragama. This weapon resembled a typical sickle used for harvesting rice, attached to a chain or rope in a way that concealed its true nature. Only in the hands of a ninja did the sickle become a deadly weapon. Meanwhile, Kunoichi were renowned for their knowledge of poisons. They concealed vials of deadly substances in their attire, hairpins, rings, and even needle-laden fans. Legend has it that their poisons were so potent that even a minor cut or prick could result in death. This was the true story of the Kunoichi, the women of the ninja. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and stay in touch.